Welcome back, everybody. We have just spent two videos looking at our fundamental identities, which are 11 basic identities that we can replace trig expressions with. And we saw how we could use these identities to evaluate a trig function value without drawing the right triangle, how we can do it algebraically by solving an equation. And we've also seen how we can simplify trig expressions by using identities, by substituting and then following our order of operations. Now, those 11 fundamental identities are very important, and we're going to use those a lot, especially when we proceed to chapter 6. But those are not the only identities that we have in trigonometry. There are many, many identities where you have a statement that's equivalent to something else. The next set of identities we do, which are in section 5.3, 5.4, 5.5, and 5.6, are identities that are useful way back in the good old days, before the, the, the technology, before we had these lovely handheld calculators. So I'm going to say this right up front. Section 5.3, 5.4, 5.5, 5, 5, 6. You're going to meet a lot of identities. You do not need to learn how to memorize them. I do not expect you to memorize all the identities we're going to encounter in the rest of this chapter. I will give these identities to you on a sheet for the last test and for the final exam. What you do need to know is the purpose of them and how to use them, okay? Today we're going to focus on one trig function only. In 5.3, we talk about cosine. And we're going to talk about an identity that doesn't deal with just one angle theta. It deals with two angles. And in your textbook, the author uses the capital A to represent the first angle and the capital B to represent the second angle. Back in my day, we always used Greek letters. So this A really represents the Greek letter alpha, and the B represents the Greek letter beta. So when I refer to A and B, I'll call them alpha and beta, okay, just so you'll understand why. So the first thing we want to talk about is understanding what expressions mean. If I write in trigonometry cosine alpha plus beta, does that really mean I could take this word COS cosine and distribute it to this angle alpha and distribute it to this angle beta and rewrite this expression as cosine alpha plus cosine beta? That's the first thing I want to verify. Does this statement expression mean the same thing as this expression? Because we normally think if you have something in front of parentheses, a term, you distribute it. Well, the only way to prove whether this statement's true or false is to make up an angle for alpha and beta. I'm choosing this. I'm just going to choose two angles we can look up quickly. So I'm going to choose quadrantal angles. I'm going to let A be 90 degrees and let B be 0 degrees. Because I know I can look up 90 degrees and 0 degrees very easily using my buddy the unit circle. So I'm going to write this left side as cosine 90 degrees plus 0 degrees. And I'm asking you, does writing this expression mean the same thing as writing it as two trig expressions? Can I take this word cosine and distribute it and write this as cosine 90 degrees plus cosine 0 degrees? Well, in order for this to be a true or false statement, I've got to see if it balances, if the values I get out are equal or not. So let's talk. If I said evaluate the cosine of 90 degrees plus 0 degrees, according to please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, we'd follow order operations and do what's inside first, right? So we could add these two angles, and we would get the cosine of 90 degrees. And then we know from Chapter 1 we can look this up from our buddy the unit circle. So I'm going to do the unit circle over here. We're talking about 90 degrees, which is the terminal ray would land here. And we know the coordinate up here is 0, 1. And because we're looking up cosine, the cosine value is x. So the cosine of 90 degrees is the number 0. Now, for these two statements to be equivalent means that I should get out of 0 now on the right side, which is saying if I take this word cosine, am I physically allowed to distribute it to both angles? alpha and beta. So let's see if this balances. I want to look at the cosine of 90 degrees. There's one angle in there. I'm going to look at the cosine of it. So I go to 90 degrees. My cosine value is the x value, 0. Plus, now I'm going to look at the cosine of 0 degrees. 
So to look up the cosine of zero degrees, I'm going to use the coordinate at zero degrees, which is one, zero, and the cosine value is still the x value, but now it's one. Is that statement balanced? Does it make sense? Does zero equal one, zero plus one? Well, no, because on the right side, zero plus one is one, and they do not equal. What that proves to you is you cannot take the word COS cosine and distribute it. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're saying, wait a minute, we just did section 5-2 and we multiplied. Yes, we did distribute, but it wasn't cosine. It was cosine theta times cosine theta. So think about this. In section 5-2, if I had written cosine theta and then I had written here cosine theta plus 1, I agree. Yes, you could distribute that because not only do you have the trig word, you have the angle with it. So that is written correctly. And you're right, cosine theta times cosine theta is cosine squared theta. So you can distribute a trig function if it's written correctly, which means not only do you have the trig word, you have the angle with it. If you look closely here, here's the trig word. Well, there's no theta because there's really not one angle connected to this. There's two. So that's why you can't distribute just the COS. This is the angle. There's two angles belonging to that trig function. There's nothing to distribute. Okay, so what that's showing you is that when I have a sum of two angles, alpha plus beta, it doesn't equal this expression. I can't just distribute COS. So then what does it equal? Well, here are where identities come from. Now they're proving the statements are true. In your textbook, it says if you have two angles, alpha plus beta, and you have the word cosine in front of them, what this really equals is this whole right side. Cosine alpha, cosine beta, minus sine alpha, sine beta. Now, I normally don't do this. I normally just don't give you something and say, learn this. However, the proof of this is a little bit long, and we don't have time in the video. I don't want to spend an hour and a half giving you a, a video where I show you where this comes from. So if you want to see where it comes from, you can look in your book. In your textbook, it shows the development. But what it's saying is when you have two angles with a trig function, the meaning of this expression is not distributing just the trig word, because you can't. The meaning of cosine alpha plus beta is this whole expression. Now, you don't need to memorize that. I'm going to give it to you. What you need to know is how to work these identities. These identities are called a sum and difference identity, because we're adding two angles out from beta, sum, or well, we're subtracting two angles, alpha and beta, a difference, okay? Now, there was a practical importance for these. I know right now when I do this with you guys, you're going to say, this is so silly. We all have calculators. Yes, calculators are great, but they didn't always exist. Even when I was in school, I know I'm dating myself. We're going back to the 80s. These were just coming out. You couldn't go and buy, pay, find a $5, $10 calculator at Walmart. They were expensive, so we didn't have them in high school. I didn't have them in college. Graphing calculators didn't exist until I graduated college. So the important thing is understanding why did we need these identities back then? Because remember, you can only look up a trig function value, sine, cosine, and tangent, if you know a quadrantal angle, because you have your unit circle, or you know the angles 30, 45, or 60, because you have your special right triangles. So what happens in the 80s if I said to you, hey, What's the value of cosine of 75 degrees? You couldn't do it. There's no 75 degrees on the unit circle. There's no 75 degrees in a 30 or a 45 or 60 triangle. So what we had to do, scary word, we had to think. We had to say, OK, we know we can't look up 75 degrees because it's not on one of our references. How could I rewrite 75 not to be one angle but two? And the two angles I rewrite them either have to add to 75 or subtract to 75. But I don't want to use 50 and 25 because I can't look those up either. The two angles that I add or subtract have to be off my references. They either have to be quadrantal or they have to be 30, 45, and 60. So everybody think for a minute. How can I rewrite 75 to be two angles that I either can add or subtract. 
that I know I can look up. Do you got it? Because I do. I can rewrite 75 degrees as 30 degrees plus 45 degrees. Do you agree with that statement? 75 degrees is really 30 degrees plus 45. And I know I can look up 30 degrees off the triangle. I know I can look up 45 off the right triangle. Here's the problem. Your first gut is going to be to distribute the word cosine. You can't distribute the word cosine. I just proved to you you couldn't distribute it. So you have to know, oh my, I am adding two angles. This is my alpha. This is my beta. There's an identity. Cosine alpha plus beta is this whole side. I got the left. I need the right. Make sense? So this statement really means the same thing as writing cosine alpha, cosine beta, minus sine alpha, sine beta. And again, I know I didn't show you where this came from. It's a long development of algebra. You can look for that in your book. All you need to know is how to work this. Well, if you know this is, I'm, I have the left side, cosine alpha plus beta. So you've got to figure out the right side of that identity. We need to do some substituting. Do we know what A is? Yes, A is 30 degrees. Do we know what B is? Yes, B is 45. Let's sub that in. So this is really the cosine of 30 degrees, cosine of 45 degrees, minus the sine of 30 degrees, the sine of 45 degrees. Everybody's good? Now, we can look those values up without a calculator, because we know how to draw our triangles. 30 degrees and 45 degrees would be in what quadrant? That's right, they'd be in quadrant one. So, here's quadrant one. I'm going to draw my right triangle. I'm using 30. Here's quadrant one. I'm going to draw my right triangle. Here's 45. We have memorized from the beginning of the semester, what are the sides of a 30 triangle? The side opposite 30 is one. The hypotenuse is two. The other side squared at three. We have memorized what are the sides of the 45, 45, 90. They're 1, 1, square root of 2. Because we're in quadrant 1, all our values are positive. Everybody's good? Now we go back. How do we look at the cosine of 30? We put our finger on 30. The definition of cosine is x over r. Or you can use in words, adjacent over hypotenuse. And now we'll substitute. The cosine of 30 is square root of 3 over 2. Cosine of 45, put my finger on 45. Cosine is x over r, adjacent over hypotenuse, 1 over square root of 2, we do not write. We know that rationalizes to be square root of 2 over 2. I'm putting a parenthesis around that because these two trig functions are side by side, so they are connected by multiplication. Therefore, the fractions are connected by multiplication. I bring down the negative. Now I look at the sine of 30. Put my finger on the sine 30. Sine is y over r, that's 1 half. Do the sine of 45, put my finger on 45. Sine is y over r, or opposite over hypotenuse. 1 over square root of 2 again is square root of 2 over 2. So what you've done is by rewriting 75 as two angles you can look up, you were able to look up the trig function values, now you can get your answer. We're going to multiply fractions. Multiplying fractions is no problem. Top times top, bottom times bottom. Square root of 3 times the square root of 2 is a square root of 6. 2 times 2 is 4. Minus 1 times square root of 2 is square root of 2. 2 times 2 is 4. We can't leave that because we need a common denominator because we're subtracting. We have it. It's 4. Here comes the boo-boo. Can we subtract a square root of 6 and a square root of 2? No, they're not alike. You can add a square root of 6 to another square root of 6. You could subtract a square root of 6 from a square root of 6, but you cannot subtract these. These are not like radicands. So you leave the numerator square root of 6 minus square root of 2. And that is your exact answer. Now, I know what you all are going to do. You all think, I'm not going to do all this work. I'm going to cheat. I have a calculator. I feel bad for you, Ms. Black, that in the 80s you didn't have a calculator and you had to do all that work. We have these lovely tools. I agree with you up to a point. And here's the point. The question said give the exact value. It said don't give me a rounded answer. 
Here's the problem with the calculator. If you want to type in cosine of 75 degrees, yes, I've taught you all how to do that from the previous lessons. You have to make sure that, first of all, what mode are you in? That's right, make sure you're in degree mode, so make sure your DEG is shown on your screen. And you're right, to type the value of cosine 75, you would hit the cosine button and type behind it 75 and close it. You wouldn't need to put the degree symbol because we're in degree mode, and you would hit equals and then look what the calculator spits out at you. If you use your calculator, the cosine of 75 degrees is going to come out to be 0 decimal point 25881905 dot dot dot. Because you know if that decimal takes up your whole screen, it never ends. It's a non-repeating decimal. If it's non-repeating, you can't play God and just round it to wherever you want. If you cut this decimal off, it's not exact. So this is going to be unacceptable as an answer for me and for my last plus. Therefore, you don't have a choice in this chapter but to do all the work. Now, what I do like about the calculator is you can prove to yourself you're right, which is something I cannot do. When I was in school learning trig the first time, I had no idea if this is right or wrong. I had to have confidence in my math ability that I did everything correctly. You can check. If you type in your calculator square root of 6 minus square root of 2 and divide it by 4, it should spit out this decimal. If it does, it's correct. The problem I found out teaching for 25 years is you guys don't know how to use your calculators correctly. If you're asking the calculator this expression, who owns the division bar? Are you dividing by 4 the square root of 6? Are you dividing by 4 the square root of 2? Or are you dividing by 4 both? You're dividing by 4, both of them. That's why the bar goes all the way across. The only way the calculator knows you're dividing the both terms by 4 is if you put the numerator in parentheses. And that's what you all forget to do. So, all you need to type in is open parentheses, get your square root button, which is normally second square root. Okay, type in the 6. Make sure you close your parentheses around the 6, so you know the 6 is underneath that square root. Hit your minus button, because now we're going to subtract. Let's put square root again, second square root. Put your 2 and close your 2 to show it's underneath the square root. And then close the parentheses here to say everything. That's everything in the numerator. So make the calculator figure out what the square root of 6 minus the square root of 2 is. Then division 4 and you will get out the same irrational decimal. So that's the good thing for you guys. At least you can check to see if you're right. But if you type this irrational number in, you're going to get marked wrong. It's not acceptable. The directions specifically say the exact answer. Okay? Okay, let's try another one. Who says the angle has to be given degrees? What's our other unit in the measurement? That's right, radians. So I'm going to erase this. Okay. Example 2 says, find the exact value of cosine negative 7 pi over 12. All right, so again, there's one angle here. We know we can change this into degrees, and that's what I would do. I'd change it in degrees to have a visual. Can I look it up on the unit circle, or is it one of my right angles, that I, one of my angles in my right triangle? So we've talked about this. Pi stands for how many degrees? 180. 180 divided by 12 is 15. Negative 7 times 15 is negative 105 degrees. So I would change it to radians just like you. I want to look up the cosine of negative 105 degrees. Can I look that up on the unit circle? No. Can I look that up on one of my right triangles? No. So now we got a problem. Instead of using this one angle, these identities are saying, let's represent 105 degrees as two angles, either that I can add to make it 105 or subtract to make it 105. But I need two angles I can look up. So the angles I choose have to be quadrantal angles, or they have to be 30, 45, 60. Can you think of two angles that you can add or subtract that would make negative 105 degrees. Well, off the top of my head, I'm thinking 
I'm going to add, because the only way to make a negative angle is to add a negative angle to a negative angle. So everybody think, what two angles can you add together that make negative 105 degrees that are angles we can look up? You got it? I got it. It's negative 45 degrees and negative 60 degrees. You all agree? If I add these two angles up, that adds up to negative 105 degrees. What I've done is I've rewritten one angle, theta, as two angles, alpha and beta. This is a sum, because I'm adding, of cosine. So I have this left side right here. I have cosine alpha plus beta. I know it equals this statement right here. So I write this statement. It equals cosine alpha, cosine beta, minus sine alpha, sine beta. Okay, that's what the identity comes in. What does this equal? Alpha plus beta for cosine is this right side. Now I substitute. I know what A and B are because I have my two angles. So I rewrite this. This is cosine negative 45 degrees. This is cosine negative 60 degrees. Minus sine negative 45 degrees. Sine negative 60 degrees. Why am I putting those angles in parentheses? Because they're negative. I want to make sure I understand they're negative angles. I'm not saying S-I-N minus 45. All right. Well, we have a problem. These angles are negative. So are our triangles in quadrant one? Oh, heck no. We know that. So going back, it's all back to basics. We're back to all our definitions from chapter one. If I draw a negative 45 degree angle, I know my initial ray is on the terminal x-axis, but my terminal ray goes clockwise. So negative 45 would put me in what quadrant? That's right, quadrant 4. And here's my right triangle. The problem is, to work with the right triangle, you need an acute angle. Acute's between 0 and 90. Negative 45 degrees is not between 0 and 90. So think about it. Going Back clockwise, negative 45 is like going ahead how many degrees? What are those called, the two angles that land on the same ray, terminal ray? Coterminal. So if you go clockwise, negative 45 degrees, it's like going counterclockwise, 315 degrees, right? Because when you go and make coterminal angles, you go in a circle 360. All right, well, that doesn't help because trig is a definition between an acute angle. That's still not acute. But we still agree we're in quadrant four, right? The terminal ray, no matter how you look at it, if you go back 45 or you go ahead 315, you land in quadrant four. To get this angle inside the triangle, that's called your reference angle. Who remembers the reference angle rule for quadrant four? The reference angle rule was 360 minus theta. So 360 minus 315 would give me 45 degrees. If you remember, when you use the reference angle rules, you have to have a positive angle. You can't take negative 45 and get a reference angle. What we've already discussed this semester, was we learned a quick little shortcut. We set up the angles in quadrant 4, which means it's negative. Its reference angle would just be that angle positive. You just proved to me the cosine of negative 45 degrees. Negative 45 is in quadrant 4, which is the same thing as saying 315 degrees, which is also in quadrant 4. And 315 from 360 is 45. So the reference angle of negative 45 will always be positive 45. So you know our right triangle is the 4590 triangle. We know the sides. The sides are 1, 1, square root of 2. But in quadrant 4, are all the numbers positive? No. We know the y value goes down, the y value is negative. Now I can look up the cosine of negative 45. Looking up the cosine of negative 45 degrees is really looking up the cosine of positive 45 degrees. So I put my finger on 45. Cosine is x over r. That's 1 over square root of 2 which we write as square root of 2 over 2. Now I want to look up the cosine in negative 60 degrees. 
So again, if we drew a negative 60 degree angle, our triangle is going to be in quadrant 4 because we're going back 60. But don't mark this angle negative 60. An angle inside a triangle, a right triangle, has got to be acute. So we know if the angle was negative 60, its reference angle is just the positive of that, which is positive 60. And we know the side opposite 60 is square root of 3, the hypotenuse is 2, so the adjacent side is 1. That's what we memorized. If I'm looking up the cosine of negative 60, which is really looking up the cosine of 60, we're still doing x over r. x over r, or adjacent over hypotenuse, we get 1 half. We know both of these functions should be positive because the triangle's in quadrant 4, and according to all students take calculus, C means cosine's positive. All right, halfway done. Minus. Now we're going to look at the sine of negative 45. See, here we are in quadrant 4. Sine is y over r. That's negative 1 over square root of 2, which we all know is negative square root of 2 over 2. We're going to look at the sine of 60, negative 60 degrees, which again is in quadrant 4. Sine is y over r. In quadrant 4, the y value is negative because it's going down. So if we do y over r, we get negative square root of 3 over 2. We know, according to all students take calculus, C, cosine should be positive, which means the sine value should be negative. Now it becomes arithmetic. We multiply, top times top, bottom times bottom. We bring down the subtract. We multiply, a negative times a negative is a positive. Top times top, bottom times bottom. We subtract, we have a common denominator, so it stays a 4. You cannot subtract a square root of 2 and a square root of 6. They're not like terms, so we just write in our numerator, square root of 2 minus square root of 6 over 4. That is the exact answer. Now, if you want to get out your calculator and change that to a decimal and see if that decimal matches, if you do the cosine of negative 7 pi over 12, that's great. Just remember, if you type in your calculator cosine of negative 7 pi over 12, what mode do you have to be in? That's right. You better switch your calculator to radian mode because that's radians. All right. Let's go to example C. So, Example A and B are showing you the purpose of why we even needed these sum and difference identities back in the good old days without calculators. Okay? Let's look at C. Ex expression C says, give me the value of cosine of 40 degrees, cosine of 50 degrees, minus sine 40 degrees, sine 50 degrees. If you look closely at that expression, can you look that up without a calculator? Absolutely not. You can't look up 40 degrees and 50 degrees without a calculator. They're not a 30, they're not a 45, they're not a 60, they're not quadrantal. You can't make them reference angles, they're already in what quadrant? 40 and 50 are already in quadrant 1, they are reference angles. So without a calculator, you can't look up these values. Well, back in my day you could. You just had to realize that this is one of these identities. Instead of giving you the left side, now I'm giving you the right side. So if you look, I have two angles. I have 40 degrees, that's alpha, and I have 50 degrees, that's beta. So which of these identities with cosine has the minus? Again, if you look, this time I'm giving you the right side. I'm giving you cosine alpha, cosine beta, minus sine alpha, sine beta, so you need to equal it to the left side. So we know that this is really the identity cosine alpha plus beta. Now look at how easy this is going to be. What's alpha? 40 degrees. What's beta? 50 degrees. We do what's inside parentheses first. We get cosine of 90 degrees, and that we can look up. Where do we look up the cosine of 90 degrees? We go to our buddy the unit circle. We go to 90 degrees. We know the coordinate there is 0, 1. We know the cosine value is the letter x, so the value of this is 0. See how quick and easy that was? Painless. OK, let's go to example 1D. OK, 1D, you're given 
in radians, cosine 11 pi over 4, no, over 12, I apologize. Cosine 11 pi over 12, cosine pi over 4, plus sine 11 pi over 12, sine pi over 4. Okay, so in 11D, again, it's asking you to find the value of all this. With a calculator, sure, you could put yourself in radian mode and type all that in and get a lovely decimal. We don't want that decimal. Okay? What I want you to notice is you got two different angles going here. You got an alpha, 11 pi over 12, and you got the beta, pi over 4. If you look closely, you have the right side of one of these identities. You have the identity cosine alpha, cosine beta, plus sine alpha, sine beta. You have the right side, so it's going to equal the left side. So what this really means I'm asking you to look up is the cosine of alpha minus beta. Now, do we have to change these degrees? Absolutely not. Let's just fill it in. Let's substitute. Alpha is 11 pi over 12, and beta is pi over 4. In order to subtract radian measure, you need a common denominator because it's fractions. So the denominator would be 12. This numerator stays the same because you didn't change the denominator. To change 4 to 12, you multiply by 3. So 3 times pi would be 3 pi. Now we can subtract 11 pi over 12 minus 3 pi over 12 is 8 pi over 12. But we all know fractions can reduce. 8 and 12 could be divided by 4. That would give us 2 pi over 3. We know what that is. Now to look that up, you're right. We need to change it to degrees. So now we'll do our converting. What is 2 pi over 3? Well, we all know from the previous chapter on graphing, pi over 3 is 60 degrees. 180 divided by 3 is 60, and 60 times 2, this would be 120 degrees. What quadrant is 120 degrees in? That's right, it's in the second quadrant. So, we don't have a triangle that has an acute angle of 120 degrees. We know from the previous chapter, if I said draw me a 120 degree angle, here would be your initial ray, you'd go 120 degrees, so from here to here is 120, right? That 120 degrees is not in the right triangle. If you drop the perpendicular, here's the angle we want. So we learned how do we get the reference angle. In quad 2, the reference angle is 180 minus theta. So 180 minus 120 meant this reference angle is 60. So to look up the cosine of 120, we learned, is really looking up the cosine of 60. And we know the sides of the 60 triangle. The side opposite the 60 is square root of 3. The hypotenuse is 2. The other leg is 1. In quadrant 2, the x value is negative because you're going backwards. So now to look up the cosine of 120 is really looking up the cosine of 60. Here's 60. Cosine's definition is x over r, which is negative 1 half. We know the answer should be negative according to all students take calculus. Students, S, sine is positive, which means cosine is negative. That's why we learned about the reference angles and the sines. Everybody's good? Perfect. All right. I'm going to let you all work on example two on your own in the notes, but I do want to look at one more, example three. Okay. So let me get my example three. The last example will work in this section. It says, find the value of cosine s plus t and cosine s minus t. And here's what you're given. You are given cosine s is negative one-fifth, cosine t, no, not cosine, sine t, sine t is three-fifths, and you're told we're in quadrant two. Okay, first of all, you know knowing what quadrant is very important. 
If we're in quadrant two, are all our trig functions going to be positive numbers? No. In quadrant two, who's positive? Sine. That means everybody else is going to be negative. So that's why that's very important. All right. So we're going to do the first part. I'm going to do with you guys the cosine of s plus t. Now, I agree with you. I don't like using the s and the t. I'd rather use a and b, alpha and beta. But your textbook uses other variables. If you want to rename them as a and b, go for it. They are asking me to look up the cosine value of alpha plus beta, okay, a and s and t. Well, the problem is, do you know how many degrees angle s is? No. Nowhere in this given information does it say angle s equals 40 degrees or pi over 4. You have no idea what the angle measure is. You don't have any idea what the angle t is. We do know if we want to find cosine s plus t, we're doing two angles, a sum. This is the identity we're using. So I know I'm going to write down when they say cosine s plus t, I know because I'm adding two angles, I have to use this identity. Instead of using a's and b's, they're using s's and t's. So I'm going to write it like that. Cosine s, cosine t, minus sine s, sine t. Now, what makes this different from the previous examples is we don't know the angle measurement. We have no degrees. We have no radians. So you can't replace s and you can't replace t because you don't know the angles. But that's OK. If we go back to the beginning of what trig is, trig is a relationship between an acute angle and two sides of a right triangle. They do give us enough information to draw a right triangle. We know what quadrant are we in? Two. The difference here is we're not drawing one right triangle, we're drawing two. Because we're talking about two different angles, S and T. Okay? So, in quadrant two, here would be our right triangle. This we're going to label S, because they're saying it's angle S. We know the cosine value is negative one-fifth, which makes sense. In quadrant two, cosine should be negative. We know the definition of cosine is X over R. So we know our X side is negative one. We know our radius is five. How do you get the missing side of a triangle? A right triangle, we do Pythagorean theorem. Instead of using a squared plus b squared equals c squared, we write x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Everything we've learned is coming back. It never goes away. x is negative 1. y, we don't know. r is 5. Negative 1 squared is 1. 5 squared is 25. We subtract 1. We get y squared equals 24. We square root both sides. y equals positive and negative. Every square root has two solutions. The square root of 24. Can you leave the square root of 24? Oh, heck no. You've got to break that down. What perfect square is in 24? 24 is really 4 times 6, right? So we know the square root of 4 is 2. So a 2 would come out, and that would leave inside the square root of 6. Now, we don't use both plus or minus. Because in quadrant two, the y value is going up, which means it should be positive. OK, now we're not done. You have another acute angle, t. So you have to draw another right triangle in quadrant two. So I'll draw that one here in orange. So again, we have a triangle in quadrant two. Now we're calling this acute angle, t. They give us the sine definition. Sine is y over r. So we know the y value is 3. We know the radius is 5. And that should make sense. The sine value should be a positive number because we're in quadrant 2, where S, students, sine is always positive. To find the missing side, again, we would do x squared plus y squared equals r squared. But if you did a good job and memorized from the beginning of the semester, that is one of your triples. That's the Pythagorean 3, 4, 5. I know one side is 3. That means the other side is 4 because the hypotenuse is 5. We know because this is the x value, it can't be positive. It's got to be negative because you're going back 4. So we know, I'm just trying to make a connection. We know when we're given trig, and we're not allowed to use a calculator. You know, it would be great if we go in our calculator and hit second cosine and type this fraction in, make it a decimal, and have the calculator spit out an angle. We've done that when we did chapter 2 and 7. 
when we're solving all those word problems. But you're not allowed to use a calculator now in Chapter 5. So there's no way we, we can change this to a decimal in our head, which we know is 2 tenths, and know the, what angle spits out the, co the cosine value in negative 2 tenths. So if we're not allowed to use a calculator, all we can do is go back to our definition. Trig is a relationship between an acute angle and the sides of a right triangle. Now, if you look at these pictures, we can answer all four of these expressions. We know the cosine of s. It was given. The cosine of x gets replaced with negative one-fifth. I want everybody to look. I didn't replace the angle. I didn't replace s with one-fifth. We don't know angle s. We know the trig function value is negative one-fifth. We know the cosine value of t. Even though it's not given, put your finger on t. Cosine is x over r. We get negative four-fifths. And those are side by side, connected by multiplication. Bring down the minus. The sine of s. We weren't told that, but we can look it up. Put your finger on s. Sine is y over r. 2 square roots of 6 over 5. The sine of t we were given. The sine of t is 3 fifths. So if you're not given the actual angle measurement for the two angles, it's okay. You draw yourself two right triangles. What I want to make sure everybody does not do is a careless mistake. When you say cosine s is negative one-fifth, you're not saying that's angle s. You have no idea how big angle s is. You don't know if it's in degrees or radians how big it is. You know the relationship between the two sides. So when you do your substitution, you're not replacing the angle this time. You're replacing the whole trig function. Now, this becomes arithmetic. We're multiplying. Top times top is 4. Bottom times bottom is 25. We're multiplying. Top times top. 2 times 3 is 6, square roots of 6. Bottom is 5 times 5, which is 25. Now we'll subtract. We already have a common denominator, 25. You cannot subtract 4 and 6 because it's not 4 minus 6. It's 4 minus 6 square roots of 6, so you leave it like that, 4 minus 6 square roots of 6. And that is the exact answer. There is no way on earth you are getting that answer out of a calculator. The only thing the calculator could do is spit out a decimal. You can't even type this one into the calculator because you don't know what angle S and T are. So you have no choice but to do all the algebra involved. Okay, I'm going to let you finish by doing the cosine of S minus T so you could practice. I'll see you in the next video where instead of doing a sum and difference of cosine, now we'll do the other trig functions, tangent and sine. See you then.